Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. Happy Monday. I appreciate you being here. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, where we chill and relax and craft and work on a project. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, we are starting a new project tonight from the designer series. We are starting the I Love Home block of the month quilt along by Jacqueline Steves. So the first block was released today. Uh, if you want to receive the block, it is free and it is on the Jacqueline C. Steve website. Uh, you can click the link in the post here and uh, sign up there and you'll get the free block, the first block. We get a new block every month and there are four blocks total. Tonight we are going to spend our time cutting our fabric. So we're going to cut the fabric for the whole quilt and then we will start up on the block. Uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, guys. Uh, my parents are in town and we're going to a Twins baseball game. Uh, but Wednesday, I will be back and we will start the block. Uh, tonight, we're going to do cutting. We'll see how far we get on that. I also wanted to show you the fabric I chose and kind of my reasoning behind that. I am not doing all straight from yardage. I am picking for my stash. Uh, so we'll, I'll show you that. Uh, I think the instructions for this project seem like, you know, when I was reading the cutting instructions, it seems like you, you should start from yardage that you've purchased, but I'm picking from the stash. So I have some fat quarters. I'm, I'm combining fat quarters to make yardage. So we'll see how that works with cutting uh, if you guys wanted to try uh, using your stash of fat quarters as well. Um, and I'm changing the colors a little bit from what what it is. You know, it's a lot of a lot of kind of pinks and stuff. I'm kind of doing more of a blue, uh, a blue collection, a blue quilt. So I'll show you kind of my process of kind of how I'm picking it and kind of keeping track of everything. And uh, that's the plan for the night. And if you guys are new, if you haven't done a project with me before, I am doing the entire process from beginning to end. We're taking our time. Feel free to ask any questions along the way. If I don't know them, someone here will hopefully know the answer. And, you know, like I said, I'm taking my time. I might not finish cutting tonight. Uh, and if you've been here before, you know, cutting is like the scariest thing for me. So uh, I hope you're here to hold my hand and <laughs> while we go through it. So, all right, guys, I am going to flip you around and we'll get going. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much for joining me again. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, so I have the pattern all ready here. I've printed out the uh, block for today, so it has all the cutting instructions with it, plus uh, block one, and I've, I've already kind of separated it. So here's block one, I got it all, all together. And here are the cutting and like the introduction instructions. So like I said, I wanted to change the colors. I didn't want to go with all, all this pink. Um, and I wanted to use my stash. So uh, what I did first is we have a list here. This is page three. It has all the fabric requirements. You know, like white, we need two eighth of a yard. And it's for block stashing borders. So what I did is I went through... And I'm a visual person, so I like having a diagram like this. So what I did is I went through and I just marked the yardage for each element. And why I did this is because I am going for my stash. So I'm like, oh, if I want to do this pink a certain color, I have to make sure I actually have 7 eighths yard worth of fabric. So I, I did that to help me visualize a little bit. So I wanted to share you what I picked. And uh, it'll give you kind of a sense of what I'm going for with this quilt. And um, I don't know, this is, this is kind of my process of picking fabric. So like I said, starting out, I, I figured out the yardage. Then I went through my stash. I'll leave this guy out. Um, here we go here. So let's scooch this. So to start out, I had this fabric. I've had this fabric for seriously like over 10 years. And I think I purchased like three yards of it. 
uh, and I thought it was just so pretty and I never used it because it was just too pretty or I just used it, you know, sparingly. And I thought, you know what? It is the time to make a quilt that features this fabric and uh, start using it. I just organized my stash, so it's time to start using it. Uh, so here is my main fabric. I'm going to put everything around this fabric here. So what I'm gonna do is this fabric, uh, let's see, if we look at the, the, the cutting instructions here, the fabric requirements, I want this for the borders, and you know what, I'm also going to use it for all these pinks. So that is the dark pink, I need seven eighths yards, and it's also the pink floral, which I need one and three eighths yards for. So what I did is I made a little label. This is dark pink and floral. <laughs> dark pink and pink floral. So, you know, it's not actually dark pink and pink floral, but this is my reminder. Uh, when I cut, when it says dark pink and when it says pink floral, I gotta remember to cut it from this fabric. So I'm labeling every single fabric with its corresponding part, even though it's totally a different color. But I wanted this to be my main, so everything that's pink here, these top borders and all of these little squares and these triangles is gonna be this pretty blue, uh, blue fabric, floral fabric, which is gonna be my showcase. So I think, you know, when you look at this, you see all this pink and that's what I, I want you to see this blue. So that's my starting point. Uh, after that, I, well, let's go to the white. So uh, here is my white. So this is one of the only fabrics that I actually have yardage for. So we'll cut this out exactly how the instructions say, but everything else is a little wonky. So here's my white. It's actually a cream that I had. Uh, so let's see, the white I needed two and an eighth yard. Again, I have my label. This is my white. Oh, you did the same thing when you changed colors. Oh, that's awesome, Renee. Yeah, sometimes I will take, I'll actually take um, I'm going to cut them right away so it's not going to matter, but sometimes I will take a wonder clip and actually clip that color right to there so I, so I keep it together. But yeah, so that is my white. And you know what? Another thing I like doing is I like starting to lay out my area as if it's my quilt. And you know what? I think I'm going to raise you guys just a hair up here so you can maybe see a little bit better. There we go. So I'm gonna lay this out as if it's my bottom border here. And I'll just put my labels aside and put them there later. So here we go. That's my bottom border. Now let's fill up this area with some of my white. So I got this white border here and you know white in the squares. We'll just throw, throw them like that. So like I said, I'm working with weird fabric for my stash for the rest of it. So um, I have two separate yards of this cream colored fabric and then I have two fat quarters. So I'm hoping out of that with the cutting instructions, I'll be able to get all the pieces I need. I needed a two and an eighth yard. So hopefully out of this, I mean, I might have some weird cuts, uh, but I think it'll work. I'm hoping it'll work because I'd like to use my stash fabrics. Oh, you're making curtains. Awesome, Antoinette. Yes, this is like the fun time to just sit and make stuff. All right, what's next? Okay, so the other main fabric that I have that I picked for my stash is for this teal. You know, there's all this, this there's this dark color that comes with all of this. So here's the fabric I have for this. Clearly not teal, but is it's re representing the teal that I got going on here. This is another fabric. I. I do not remember purchasing this, but I have a lot of it and I thought it was so pretty. And, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever used it, but, you know, again, I cleaned my stash, so I happen to have it. And so I thought these two together, there's something neat about it. I don't think I would have ever normally paired these fabrics together, but I don't know, the floral brings it together. You got kind of this orange and this kind of orangey, warm, you know, things going on here. So I'm like, you know what? Can I make these work? <laughs> so let's see. So this is what I'm going to use for, again, let's kind of design it. Let's pretend this is my block here. 
This is what I'm going to use for everything that's teal. And again, I have yardage of this, so I should be able to cut the teal normally. But all right, uh, next up for this yellow, I don't have any more yardage, so I'm picking it from fat quarters. So I'm hoping by all these fat quarters, I will be able to pull together this yellow. So instead of yellow, I'm doing green. So I pulled these couple fat quarters of green, different greens that I thought were kind of pretty florally still, like we got butterflies, all these little florals. I'm kind of going with this floral theme based on these two fabrics. So I picked florals. This is gonna represent my color yellow. So yellow number one, actually. So I have this label yellow number one. And then for the blue, this light blue, I'm going with um, these kind of dark, dark tones. This one's not as dark, but, uh, and these two are the same. It's kind of these kind of rich, kind of dark, almost like blue blacks almost, right? Oh, thanks Kathleen. So um, this will represent, you know, if we tuck them in here or something, Oh, here, let's move up a little bit. Here, you can, you can start seeing what this might look like, like a block, right? You got some of the white, you got some of this color, this dark teal, uh, this will be my yellow, and these up here will be this light blue. And what I like about this light blue being these darks too is that it's also these, uh, these lines right here, these tiny little border lines. So let's see. I always kind of play around like this. I, I see what it looks like. I pretend this is the actual quilt. You know, if I tuck some of these underneath here, I think these look so pretty uh, along this, this showcase fabric, right? Because I want this blue to be my showcase. So it's kind of framed by that tiny sliver of a border of these other kind of rich dark blues. So that's kind of the main quilt. So if you look at this, I think you get kind of a feel of the quilt, or at least I do. So when, I, when I'm when i choosing fabric, I will kind of get to this point and then I'll start taking fabrics out and replacing them and until I get kind of the breadth of something that I like that feels good with this. And I did make sure um, I have some darks, I have some lighter colors and lighter colors and then a few mediums. Um, so they kind of, the tones of them go together a little bit. And then there's the applique. So for the centers, for these cute little houses, I want to do applique and embroidery, but I did pull fabrics that I thought went with all this, and I might use scraps from these as well, but uh, I did pull fabrics from it that I thought would go well together. So here's my yellow. I thought some of this ornate stuff brought in some of this ornate craziness and um, I think this yellow kind of brings in some of these these florals. I really like I really like this side too with like look how pretty that is. Uh, this is representing my pink for the house. Uh, this is representing my green. You know there's some little there's some little hills in there that are green. And then I got this kind of funny it almost looks like wood. So this is uh, this is gonna be my like charcoal. I think it was. So this will be like for the roofs and everything. And again, I might pull from my scraps, but here we go. This is going to be my, uh, my palette here. Um, I'm excited about it. I don't usually, I'm not usually playing with all these florals and uh, anything like that. So it was kind of a challenge for me starting with these two like uber florals and uh, picking from there. But I got to tell you, I am over the moon excited to finally be using like my showcase fabric here that I've been like hoarding for 10 years. The um, the salvage on this says it's from 2002. So that's probably how long I've, I've had this fabric. And again, I just, I just haven't used it because it's too pretty. So, all right, I'm gonna stack these up again and let's start cutting this. But I wanted to kind of show you my process for, um, here we go, this is light blue, uh, my process for thinking through some of these things. Uh, here are my applique pieces. I'm gonna just stack those all together. These I'm actually gonna put aside. We're not gonna cut these applique pieces at all, at all tonight, so I'll throw that behind me. These represent my yellows. And again, I'm not cutting from yardage, so 
I'm gonna just use the instructions and when I run out of this fabric, I'll start this fabric up. It's gonna be very scrappy, but I'm excited about that. It's, it's using up my stash, my, uh, my fabric bin is, has a lot less in it, which is exciting. I feel like I'm using up my stuff finally. So, all right, here's this. Let's get the label for this. This is my dark pink and floral, or dark pink and pink floral. And this is my teal, <laughs> absolutely not teal. But look how crazy and internet Nate this is. Man, I don't know, I don't know what, I got, I bought this from somewhere, but Gosh, I don't remember why, but I'm so happy to be using it now. All right, oh, and the white. I think we start out with white. So, okay, so here we are. I am going to move on in the instructions to the cutting. And here we go. And this is where the labels are going to be super duper helpful. You know, the first one's easy. This is the white. So let's undo the wonder clip. I'll throw that thing back in here. And you know what? I think I'm gonna keep, I'll keep my labels with, um, with each block. I might have to make more labels uh, because I gotta remember that, you know what? I still have to remember that that floral is teal, you know? Even when it's in the blocks. Oh, another thing, so I am, I'm gonna be cutting all the fabric for everything, uh, and then I'll be divvying it into the blocks, and I'm gonna put each block into a Ziploc bag here, and I will label each block with a Sharpie. And then, then all the blocks will be ready to go for the month that we'll be doing it, and um, that's great. All right, so let's start here. Um, I'm gonna start with actual yardage. Oh, and you guys might notice, if you've been here before, I am using a different cutting board tonight. I'm gonna try a different uh, rotary cutter too. So Ulfa is a sponsor of this quilt along and they sent over some products. So I'm using this Ulfa Splash. Apparently it uh, can change blades really quickly. So maybe we'll play with that a little bit later. Whoop, geez, um, it's slippery. It has a little quick release, blade change, quick release. So I don't know. We'll cut with this and then maybe at the end we'll try it out. And then this cutting board is one of those foldy cutting boards. So you can travel, you can travel with it. So that's pretty cool. I always wondered what these were like, uh, if they cut well. So I'm gonna test that. Here's the, you can hardly even see it. There's the fold. Uh, so we'll give that a try too. It's a little smaller than my normal cutting mat. So I might, actually I'm gonna turn it right now. I'm gonna have to turn it this way. Uh, to get the best use out of it. But I thought I'd give that a try tonight as well. It's gonna be funny cutting with a new rotary cutter. It really is uh, slippery. My normal rotary cutter is still is still an Ulfa, but I don't know, maybe I wore in the grip a little bit. Is it the same size? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's still a 45 millimeter blade. Oh, the, the shape of the handle is a little bit different. This one's got a more kind of roundish thing going. All right, let's try it. Oh, this is the rotary color that you have. Yeah, changing the blades, that is a pain in the butt, isn't it? So um, when we're done cutting, uh, it might not be today, but on Wednesday, if we get done cutting, uh, let's, we'll change the blade with this thing just to see how it works. They, they also sent me these Ulfa, the Ulfa Endurance blades, which supposedly cuts twice as long. So we'll, we'll exchange it with one of these uh, and see, see how it goes. So anyway, let's get going. So all y'all yelled at me last time we worked on a project that I didn't press it before. So I will press everything as we go. I have my iron above me here. I'm just getting my other fabric out of the way. So what do we got going on first? Just so we can see. Okay, cut one 10 inch with a fabric strip and then cut uh, four 10 inch squares from that. Okay, 10 inch strip with a fabric. So let's see, this is all folded up. I have no idea how it's folded. Okay. With the fabric would be selvage to selvage. So I would, I'm gonna fold this in half while I cut and I am gonna iron this. So I will cut, what we're gonna do first is cut 10 inches and then I'll cross cut uh, those other few inches. But let's, let's give it a press first. So up to my ironing board. 
So I have this uh, this little kitty towel on here because my ironing board, I got this new, uh, but the metal underneath burns my fabric. So I get a nice little image of the metal on there. So I got the, the kitty fabric up here. And I don't have any water in my machine, so I'm just gonna use this uh, kind of lightweight starch, this flatter starch to kind of wet wet my fabric a little bit. We'll see how that goes. All right, so let's give this a spray. Taking our time and doing it right. This might have to wake up a little bit here. I decided to break out my little travel iron. I've been using my, my big iron here, and you know what? It, it's a lot of work for my arms and, and everything. And I'm like, dang, I have this travel iron. That might work well. So we're going to play with that, that some more. All right. Yeah, so if you guys want to do this, this quilt along with me, it is the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Project, and it is free. Uh, you just have to sign up um, on her website, and there's a link here in this Facebook post about that, uh, a link to her website. And you sign up, and you will get block one sent to you. Today is day one of this project. And like I said, we will be... Oh, you know what? I didn't spray that other part. Um, we will be uh, working on this project consistently... Uh, every weeknight, except for tomorrow, I won't be here, but every weeknight but tomorrow until we're done. And we're going to make the whole quilt step by step by step by step. So if you want to hang out with me and make it with me, um, I'm not, you know, I won't do any of this without you guys here. Except for go through my fabric stash because that took for, that took hours and hours to kind of figure out everything. But from here on out, I am not going to do anything uh, without you guys here. And this will all go up. Uh, the replay will be will stay here on Facebook, but it will also be on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I don't think I put that in the, in the Facebook post here, but I will after we're done here. But yeah, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to shout them out. That's the beauty of being live here. All right, let's do the other side quick. I know I'm taking the time to uh, press stuff with you, with you guys here, but you know, it all, it all matters. Uh, and I want to, you know, I want you guys to, but I mean, the nice thing about being live is you do get to see every single step. So I'm, I'm not going to jump ahead and, you know, skip something and, or just tell you to do something and, and, uh, you know, not show you how to do it or anything. And you know, this, this isn't my project. This is Jacqueline Steve's project. So I am, I'm learning from, from her, her, uh, instructions and stuff too. I mean, I am not a professional like Uber quilter or anything. And, uh, you know, I did the splendid sampler project and I learned a ton from that. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping to learn more. Uh, Maureen, what will you be doing when you're done with the block? Oh, so uh, you know, we get blocks once a month. So in theory, this won't take all month. So when we are done with this project, uh, we'll be doing, uh, one of my embroidery kits. So this is the craft a happy life embroidery kit. I just got finished with the sale for this. If you guys ordered one, um, I know a bunch of you guys did. If you ordered one, they all went out today. So you should receive them sometime this week. Uh, and we will be doing, we will be starting that project right when we get done with block one here. And if you didn't, if you didn't get in the sale, uh, the, it is still available on penguinandfish.com. And you know what? I don't think I put a link to that in here either. I will make sure to put a link to the craft a happy life project when I'm done here as well tonight. Almost done here with the, this pressing. Like I said, we might take a few days to get through the cutting process, but we are cutting the entire quilt. So after this, we'll just be cruising along and sewing. Almost done. 
If I had water in my iron, I, I wouldn't really have to use this starch, I don't think. But it's just kind of acting as water for me. This is a pretty light starch. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not making my fabric stiff or anything. Almost there, I can see the end. But yeah, it's, it's good that I'm pressing it this time, especially with a quilt when things have to be very precise. I didn't press in my last project beforehand and that was probably a dumb idea. All right, last little bit here. Okay, let's cut. Shimmy this up to the edge. All right, back to the cutting board. So again, we need to cut selvage to selvage because that's the, that's the width of the fabric is selvage to selvage. Uh, so yeah, so width of fabric strip. So width of fabric means selvage to selvage. And the selvage is either that little frayed edge or it's also where they put the, the name of it, the name of the fabric collection, the designer in there. That's, that's what the selvage is. It's woven a little more tightly than, than the other parts of the fabric. So, and since it's very long, it's about 42 inches, I'm gonna fold it in half to cut it. And I actually might fold it, in, fold it again, but we'll see. So just matching up the selvages, kind of laying it flat. Uh, what flatter I am, this is the celebration flavor of, of the flatter starch. It kind of has a floral, not like a, not like a powdery floral, more of like a, just a juicy, juicy candy like floral maybe. I don't know, something close to that. All right, so I'm just trying to get this a little flat here. Again, matching up the selvages. All right, I think we're pretty close. Try and get all those kinks out. I'm tempted to fold it in half again, but I think we can do it like this. So, all right, what I'm gonna do first is give it a really nice straight edge. I have my uh, 24 inch ruler. Oh, great, that, that'll work perfect. So let's, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is the fold right at the top here. You can see my fold. I am going to align the fold as best I can on one of these ruler lines. Because we want the fold straight, so when we unfold it, it will be um, as straight as possible. Oh, Dorothy, thanks for uh, the I Love Home hashtag. So you guys, there is a giveaway from Aurafil for uh, block number one. They're the block number one sponsor. If you like my Penguin and Fish page and Facebook page here that you're watching this on and uh, write hashtag I love home quilt, then you'll be signed up for the Aurafil giveaway. All right, we're ready. I'm going to just trim a nice straight edge along. I'm gonna just lining up with the ruler top to bottom. All right, let's give this new rotary cutter a try. It really is feels a little light and slippery in my hand, so I don't know, I'm a little hair nervous. Here we go, new cutting board, new, ro new uh, rotary cutter. Okay, did it. Rotary cutter safety, I always, uh, when I turn it on, I immediately turn it off right away. So safety is on right now, safety off, safety on. Get into that habit, you don't wanna cut off a finger. All right, so that's a good straight edge. I wanna leave that there, all perfect. Um, all right, instructions. I need one 10 inch strip. All right, let's, uh, I got this bigger ruler here. Um, I'm gonna do one through 10 inches. I'm gonna line that along with my nice straight edge. This is the double ruler method of of doing this. Okay, so just gotta check. 
Because I'm scared of cutting, I have to check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because I'm a crazy person. This ruler actually does have an extra half inch, so it always makes me nervous that I'm getting that extra half inch in. All right, that's, that looks like 10. So then I'm gonna butt up this ruler against that 10. I think we're good right there. So I'm gonna slide away that, and we will cut our 10 inches. Checking, double checking that it's 10. Yep, instructions say 10. <laughs> I can never talk when I cut. All right, man, I can tell that's a nice, sharp, fresh blade. All right, our first cut is done. Our first piece, first strip. All right, so out of that uh, 10 inch with the fabric, we need uh, we need four 10 inch squares. So I'm gonna leave this folded and I'm gonna just, you know what? I'm gonna rotate this whole dang thing. There we go. Then it'll stay nice and square. Um, all right, so I'm gonna trim, since it's still folded, all I have to do is cut two 10 inch squares out of here, right? Because it's still folded, so it's all doubled up. It's getting a little crowded over here. I work in this small space in my kitchen, so it's a little, I gotta rearrange my rulers here. So I'm gonna cut off these selvages. Um, they go a little further in than what it looks like, so I'm gonna cut it, I'm lining it up on my ruler at like this quarter inch mark here. All right, I got that nice and straight. There we go, and now I need to do two cuts that are, you know what? Let's even do one better. I'm gonna redo that cut. Let's fold it in half again. Speed cutting! Um, let's, oh, how are we close here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are, so I'm gonna trim. I'm gonna get these edges all nice, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim that again. I should have folded it first. So we'll go in this kind of 3 eighths area. Since we have a nice fresh blade, geez, four, four layers of fabric is nothing. Awesome, so that's easy. Let's get uh, my big ruler out again. Let's measure the 10 right on the edge. And I'm also gonna line I'm gonna line uh, both of these to try and get it square. So there's the 10 and then aligning this to the bottom. Great, and all we have left is this little edge here. Since I'm not left-handed, I'm gonna plop that on. I think we're looking pretty good. All right, move that ruler. Again, if you notice, I'm taking it off. Put it right back on. All right, so that's all we have left for scraps. I'm gonna lay those aside. And here we are, our four 10 inch squares. So we should have four here. Perfect, I'm gonna put those to the side. Let's see, right on my chair. And I am going to go over here. Let's mark these guys off. We did that first strip and we did our four 10 inch squares. Next up, we have, we have to cut four one inch uh, width of fabric strips and then we cross cut it a bunch. So, all right, let's worry about this first. Four one inch strips. All right, we can use our same, our same piece that we were using before. Uh, I'm going to go the long way again. Oh, sure enough, Julie. I know, thanks everyone. Uh, if you're new here, I appreciate you being here. It's always fun starting a new project. And yeah, if you guys, like I said, if you have any questions about this project at all, um, I'm doing the whole thing live from beginning to end, however long that may take. And uh, you can just join me every evening at 9.30 p.m. and I'll be here working on it. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow night, just letting y'all know. Uh, my parents are in town, we're going to a Twins game. And uh, every other night I will be here though. So here's that straight edge we cut before, but I moved it around quite a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-trim it actually. So I'm gonna start up at the top again. I'm gonna make sure this fold 
is to the best I can do along along one of the lines of my of my ruler. And you can kitty scratch it. So kitty scratching is we kind of came up with it. Uh, if you just need to move your fabric just a little, just scratch it a little, like you're scratching a kitty's head. You just need to go a tiny bit. So, all right, we're good. Let's trim, retrim our straight edge here. And then we need four one inch strips. And you know what? I may, eh, I'll still use the, the ruler method, the two ruler method. I was gonna just use my, my, uh, my mat as one inch, but I don't know. My mom always said that two rulers is more, more accurate than, than using the mat. So we're going to do that. Is your mom doing this so long? Yeah. I, I think she is Belinda. She's, I think she's on the fence. I think she, she has the, uh, she signed up for it and she has all of the, um, pattern or the, uh, the block number one downloaded, uh, I think she's still deciding for sure if she's doing it. All right, again, let's let's double check. Yep, for one inch strips. Man, one inch is so small. Look at how little this is. Where are these gonna go in the quilt? All right, just making sure it's one inch. So yeah, she might be doing it. I'm, I'm hoping that she does. All right, line it up there. We still look good. All right, let's move that first ruler out of here, scrap. No, I moved a little bit, but not too much. So there's strip number one. Oof, I'm gonna try and keep those together as best I can. I'm just gonna, oh, look, I already got it caught. I'm just gonna set that aside there. Let's move along. We need four of these. Man, we might just finish cutting the white tonight. You know, I'm, I haven't, you know, I, I like quilting, but I haven't done so many of them that I'm used to the idea of cutting a whole quilt all at once. If you rule a line, if you rule your mat lines so much out, then your cutting will be off. Best use the rule lines over the mat lines. Oh, so, okay, Deb, that's great. So. Uh, that's the whole double ruler method. If your ruler and mat lines don't match up, then cutting will be off. Best use the ruler lines over the mat lines. Yeah, I am, because you know, when I'm cutting, you know, like I shifted this a little, I'm touching it kind of a lot. So, so it's moving around. So I, I know that my ruler is gonna be in the end more accurate than the mat. So I'm not worrying about the mat too much. Technically, I wouldn't even need to be using the, I wouldn't even need the rulers on the mat, really. Could just do this all with the rulers. I mean, this is a very skinny one inch little thing, so I'm being a little careful cutting. Oh, I thought it felt like I, felt like I didn't have it all the way through here, dang it. There we go. Oh no, I still don't have it, oh no. Let's just do it by hand here. Pressed a little too lightly there. All right, I think I got it now. Hopefully that won't hurt me too much. All right, let's keep going. I think we'll be good in the end. Two more. Yeah, I get nervous cutting all these long strips. One thing, and I learned this on the Splendid Sampler, uh, that Quilt Along we just did. I'm still working on that project, but I got these stickers for the bottom of my rulers, and that has been helping me quite a bit with my cutting. So I have these uh, stickers at the bottom. They're called uh, True Grip stickers. They're like little rubber bottoms, and that has helped me a ton for my ruler slipping all over the place while cutting. So I'm pretty happy about those. They kind of wear off after a little while, but these seem to still still be working okay. All right, this is my last strip. And you know what? While I have this big thing here, I'm kind of tempted to cut the next part before cross-cutting these. I think I'm gonna do that. 
since I have the nice edge here. So let's do that. I'm going to put these, these guys all together here. Actually, they can just stay. But I want to, um, before I move this into the next ones, uh, the width of fabric, I want to cut that right away. So cut one five and an eighth inch strip. Ooh, okay, five and an eighth inch strip. So this is a six inch ruler. Oh, but that's my only long ruler. So let's, oh, but the other one doesn't have, yeah, it has eighths. Okay, we'll get this one back out. So five, what was it? Five and one eighths. So this must be used for half square triangles or rectangles or something because it's a funny measurement. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and that's a quarter. Here is my eighth inch mark. Five and an eighth. Let's check again. Yep, one, five and an eighth. Ah, I gotta check like eight times. Oh, hospital tape use works great for. Um, Ruler sliding. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into that. I have no idea what that is even. Hospital tape. One, two, three, four, five, and an eighth. Oh man. Always so nervous cutting. But yeah, I'm doing this because, you know, I'm getting this nice straight edge. Might as well keep utilizing it. All right, let's let's see what else I can cut out of here before cross cutting. Five and an eighth. Oh, I need to cut three, two and a half inch with the fabric. So three, two and a half inch. But I'm gonna run out of fabric soon and need to start my next one. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just put all these to the side. We'll cross cut everything all at once, I think. I think this is gonna be a faster way of doing it. So, all right, that's going to the side. This guy is going to the side. I'm trying not to move it a lot because I wanna still use that straight edge, but I am gonna need more more cutting board here, so I'm going to scooch, scooch this over a little bit. Let's try and get it on one of these lines. Again, I'm really what I'm worried about is that is that top fold line more than anything else. So this this edge I want to match up to a line and make sure this top fold. It could be at the bottom, depending on where you put it. It's probably easier at the bottom, but I want to make sure that's as close to being on that fold as well. I mean, I could trim this again, but I think we'll just keep going. I think we're good. All right, what's next? Three, two and a half inch, three, two and a half inch width of fabric. So I think this is, this is three. So I just need to go scooch it over a little bit more. Two and a half, three of these, three, two and a half inch. One, two and a half. All right, we got that. There's a bit of a grip. Oh, to hold gauze or IVs or something. Oh, that's interesting. So it has like a little rubber, rubber bit to it or something. All right, this is my first one. I need three cuts of this. All right, that's one. This is, I bet, for all those little squares in the border, if I had to guess. Two and a half. Oh, the three, the 3M Millipore clear tape. Huh. Is that what it is? But yeah, I'll put a link to these uh, True Grip stickers in uh, the YouTube post for sure. Next care, it has a grippy texture. Huh, okay. Yeah, the nice thing about these true grips is that they're clear too, so I can see I can see all my ruler lines and the, the fabric through it and everything still. All right, let's do one more. Oh man, I can't get a hold of it. There we go. Well, so far I'm not having any problem with this uh, this rotary cutter or the the cutting mat, this neat foldy cutting cutting mat. I like the idea that I can just fold this mat up and bring it with me pretty easily. I'm gonna run out of this yard of fabric soon. Oh, it's clear too, that tape. Oh, interesting. I'm gonna have to Amazon that, see, see what comes up. 
All right. Any else that's with the fabric? Oh, yep, yeah, sure enough. Oh, the whole thing is with the fabric. So, okay. Uh, six, two inches with the fabric. Okay, we are going to run out by doing that, but that's okay. Um, we'll just start. So, six, two inch widths of fabric. And once I run out of this fabric, I'll start cross cutting and then we'll, we'll finish up. Let's see, can I get, how many can I get out of here? I don't know if I can get all six out of here. Probably not. Let's line it up again. I think I'm gonna scooch over a hair more here. Okay, that's straight. This is straight-ish, straight-ish enough. Okay, six two-inch pieces. So let's get this guy out again. Oh, we might be able to get six out of here before switching to, like I said, I don't have yardage of this whole thing. I have two separate yard cuts and then a, a couple of fat quarters. So, so my cutting isn't gonna be as easy or as continuous, I, I suppose would be a good way of saying it, um, as if I would have had had all yardage. And actually my my uh, selvage is getting less and less together, but I think we're still square, so we're gonna keep going. So that's one. This is two. All this cutting, man. This is one of those steps that I always forget takes a bunch of time. This and pressing. Those two things, like if I'm thinking of a, of a quilt process in my head, I never ever remember to consider those in the time allotment, really. Oops, shoot, I, I took that off too quick and blew this up a little bit. I think we're still good. This is three. Eh. I think I'll get five out of here. I don't think I'll get six. So I gotta remember that I only did five. I'll have to make a note. I'm gonna make a note that I need one more, I think. Otherwise I'll forget. Notes are good. All right. This is three. One, two, three. Ooh, we might only, Ooh, I might only get one more. I think I'm only gonna get one more, so four. I'm gonna have to get two more out of the next, my next yard of fabric. Yep, this is for sure not two inches left. Well, we'll have a little scrappy piece. Okay, that is it for yard number one. This is a scrap right here. All right, let's make some notes in our in our guy here. So we, I need two more. Oh, let's get scooch down here. I need two more of these two inch or these six. Need two more. All right, let's do the cross cutting. So I'm gonna move all of these out of the way. So here are the twos. Here are the two and a halves. Ooh, let's move this ruler. Here is the five and an eighth. Okay, and we are back to our teensy one inch strips. Goodness, they're little. All right, let's flip around again. All right, what do we need from these one inch strips? Okay, cut four one inch strips. So we need eight, uh, one inch by nine and a half and eight, uh, 10 and a half. So what do we got here? I think we can stack all these on top of each other. So this is, uh, this is still folded in half. So this is two. What I really gotta do though, is make sure that they're lined up again, cause they got, all over the place a little bit. So we'll kind of 
kitty scratch them in place a little bit and get them in line with one of our rule lines here. Okay, that one's look good. And, and since we, like I said, have this super nice new uh, rotary cutter blade, I'm gonna just keep stacking them on. You can stack them one above each other, but I'm gonna just uh, keep going right on top of the last one. So this is one, two, three, four. Ooh, I think I can get this in two cuts or three cuts if you include my cleaning up the first cut. Uh, I think normally I wouldn't go through eight pieces of fabric at once, but again, since my blade is fresh and new, I think we'll be okay. So this I'm gonna match the selvages a little bit better. Okay. Wow, these are small. What are these used for? I'm gonna have to peek. Well, looking at the design, I didn't recall any teeny tiny strips like this. Oh, I know, I think they're in kind of the outside border a little bit. The uh, or the inside, like around the blocks, like the cornerstones and the, the strips between them. All right, so I got them all lined up. I'm gonna trim them all on this line here. And I got it aligned with this bottom row. I think we are good. I think we can do it. So, all right, let's, I'm gonna get this ruler out. First, let's clean it up. I'm cutting off the selvages here. Again, I would only, only attempt this with a fresh new blade. Yeah, look, it went through like nothing. Okay, so I need eight nine and a half inch strips. Let's start there. So I have eight layers right here. Nine and a half. So I do have a half marking here. This is a ruler that has a half. So I will go to the nine mark. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the half. Oh man, I'm gonna have to, that freaks me out. I'm gonna have to count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a half. Perfect. So there we go. I got a line here and here. And line that up. This is our nine and a half inch strips, eight of them. Ha ha, quick cutting. So there we go, that guy's done. Eight, nine and a half inch strips. Let's, uh, I'll set those on my chair, that's done. And now these 10 inch strips, and you know what, I'm gonna scooch them down. Normally I don't wanna do that because I wanna keep, keep my nice edges. But I think, I think we're okay. Aligning them along that nice square area. All right, 10 and a half, so eight 10 and a half inch strips. So one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Right there, plus my little half. Okay. We'll have a tiny bit left over. Woohoo! All right, these are scraps. Put them to the side. And those are our 10 and a half inch. So we had nine and a half inch ones and uh, 10 and a half inches. So let's throw those down to the side. What is up next? Okay. Um, you know what guys, I think we're going to finish cutting the pieces that we have already here. And then I think, I think we'll just continue cutting. We'll continue cutting the white fabric. Well, all the fabric really we will continue cutting on Wednesday because like I said, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but I'll be back. I'll be back Wednesday. So let's take a look at this. This is our five and a half. Oh, I get to check stuff off. That's the best part. Okay. Uh, pencil, where did you go? Here we go. All right, we are done with the uh, four one inch strips, both of those. Okay, we need eight five and an eighth inch squares. If you can only get seven squares from the width, then cut, oh, from the width of your fabric, cut the eighth from your scraps. Okay, I might only get seven out of here, I guess. But let, let's see how it goes. Do I have my selvages matched? Yep, we're fine there. Okay, I'm gonna cut off the selvage. You know what? I could fold this in half. Let's do that. We might only get seven out of here, but whatever. I'll have to make a note of that too if we don't get all eight out of here. So this should be four. Yeah, because I have four layers now. 
Good, so let's trim this. Gosh, you know what? I'm nervous about not having enough, so I'm gonna lose a little bit more. I'm gonna get this closer, this, this folded cut. There we go. I know, Heather, it's, it's gonna be so fun. I'm, I'm really excited to get started sewing, but you know what? I'm super excited uh, that I'll have all this cut and just ready to sew. I'm not used to that, having everything pre-cut. All right, five and an ace, I need eight total. So this is in fours. So I just need to make two cuts and hopefully they all fit. So five, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and an eighth. Oh, this is tricky because I don't, the measurements don't go like that. You know what? I'm gonna have to use this other ruler. This other ruler has the markings of the five eighths in here better. So one, two, three, four, five, and an eighth. There we go. That other ruler didn't have the eighth markings all the way down. Five and an eighth. Just double check. We need eight, five and an eighth inch squares. Great. So let's get our double ruler thing going. Oh, I think we're gonna be able to get all eight out of here. That's excellent. Okay, that's our first four. How, measure how wide it is before you cut. Oh yeah, Maureen, I should have done that. I think I could, I think I was eyeballing it enough. Yeah, so we should be able to get our other four out of here. Man, it's nice, a fresh blade on the rotary cutter. Can really, really chop through this stuff. Five and an eighth. Yes, I'm happy we got all of our pieces out of here. Five and an eighth. Zoop. All right, scrap. And here we are, our eight, five and an eighth inch squares. Moving on. So I'm gonna cut two more things tonight and then we will call it an evening, I think. First of all, we get a, we get a check mark off those. Next up, three, oh, two and a half inch with the fabric. We don't have to cross cut those at all. So, so these, are, these are done. Let's just stack those up. I'm gonna just kind of fold it in half. Uh, those are done. Excellent. Check mark those puppies. All right, and then our two inch strips, which we actually need, we actually need two more of them. So you know what guys, I think I might just wait until we have the two more strips because I think with this new blade, I can probably go through 12, 12 pieces of fabric all at once because we need to cross cut these into 12, wow, two and 18th inch strips. So I'm thinking I can layer all 12 and chop them all at once. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna wait on these for tomorrow. And I think we will stop there for tonight, guys. So all we have to do yet with the white fabric, I might not even have to, I don't think I'm gonna have to break into my extra fat quarters. I think we'll get it all out of my, my two single yards that I have going on here. Um, because all we have left is five, three and a quarter, uh, strips for the borders and six two and a quarter for the borders and then a few from um, a few extra little two and a half inch squares from there so all right guys this is what we got done tonight not too glamorous but hey uh, we are getting all of the cutting done all at once which is totally awesome so what I'm gonna do you know what the plan is is I'm gonna go through each of my fabrics and cut everything. So that like, this is all of the white. Then we'll do all of the dark pink, which is actually my blue. And we will go through every single color. You know, we gotta cut all of these. This is for the entire quilt. And then, then here we go. Then we start organizing. So here's block one. This is where we pick all the pieces of white, all the pieces of dark pink, all of the pieces that we just cut. We pull out only the ones for that block. And that's what I'm gonna put in a plastic bag. So all of that will go in block one, and then we'll do the same for block two once we've cut everything. So until that point, I'm gonna keep all the whites together, and then I'll put all the other colors, and then I will pick and pull the blocks together. So we'll be doing this cutting for a little while yet, but again, once this cutting is done, 
we are organized for the whole entire project. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Hello again. So I'm excited. New project. We got a great start. Uh, again, here we go. We are cutting all the white first and we are cutting out every single piece uh, except for the applique. That'll be a whole separate thing. But we are cutting all the piecing pieces of this quilt uh, first. So uh, just to let you know, this will the replay of this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. After this, it will also stay here on Facebook. It will go live um, or well, the replay will be be up right uh, right when we're done here live. And I won't be here tomorrow again, but I will be here back on Wednesday and then we will do this uh, this project throughout. So I'll be back to cutting on um, on uh, Wednesday. Oh, you asked a little scissor. So Maureen, I, I drew, I just got a, an iPad with the Apple pencil and I, I was playing around with it. So that's the little like fake painting that I did of the little scissors, the little embroidery scissors. So I, I put that guy up there, right there. Boop. So that's why that's there, just for fun. I had a good time fake painting it. So awesome guys. Thanks again for joining me. I love seeing you guys every night. I appreciate you being here. And uh, again, feel free to ask any questions whenever you want, and uh, I will catch you on Wednesday. So have a great day tomorrow and see you on Wednesday evening. Good night.